Hello everyone, welcome back to Microsoft Flight Sim where I'm going to take a look at the AM225 that was recently released into the in-game marketplace. It was made by Any Builds in conjunction with Asobo and Antonov and it is priced at $20 so it's not a full study level sim sort of thing but it is pretty darn good for the price and I'll show you some of its features. I've flown it a few times and frankly crashed it a few times. It is very hard to fly and I've flown many things. Uh, it is very hard to fly, especially with its maximum payload, which is practically the only way I've been flying it so far. So, if you're not flying with its maximum payload, then maybe it's a little bit easier. Uh, it is a lot to handle. We'll take a look inside here. You can see the cockpit is in fact in Cyrillic, so you're going to have to get adjusted to that. It has a pad, and with many features. Uh, it's got realistic nose door movement, or fast nose door movement. Let me tell you, realistic is it takes a while. Uh, it says cockpit language English and Cyrillic but the English does, uh, when selecting English it doesn't mean that all the things are, all the dials are suddenly in English. Uh, it's just that some things like the, you'll note the little throttle control warning um, that is in English like that and Cyrillic like this. And then we have metric and imperial, I'll keep that to metric and uh, altitude window I don't know right now. In fact, the entire autopilot system is completely opaque to me. I don't really understand it. Uh, so we're going to leave that be for now. There is an engineer panel in the back. Some switches work, but not all switches. So there's like engine anti-ice stuff and fuel pump switches, which are of course important. Uh, probably you can go through some semblance of a startup procedure, just uh, probably not everything because there are switches that aren't uh, available, though uh, the generator switches are. Okay, so it looks good, it looks good. And what we want to do is lift up the nose door. I'm sure once I mentioned that, uh, you would have thought that. And we want to load a different cargo. That's another feature. We can load trucks, fire trucks, train, helicopter, or large industrial boiler, which is sort of uh, sort of fancy and uh, famous. It's uh, one of the heavier loads that the AN-225 would carry. So I'm gonna open the door and that will make it go faster. It is the fast way. And so you can see the door coming up, or coming up like here. So this, it is much slower in the slow way. So the AN-225 is uh, a record-breaking uh, lifter. And the proceeds of the sale of this are going to go to rebuilding it, hopefully. Um, hopefully they'll have enough funds and impetus to rebuild the AM-225. It is a highly specialized plane, capable of lifting things that other things simply cannot. Originally meant to uh, lift Buran from place to place, and also used in the design of the MAX shuttle which I have done in Kerbal Space Program. In fact, I have my own much, much lesser replica of the AN-225 in Kerbal Space Program uh, in order to use it with the MAX shuttle. That was a proposed design that wasn't put into action. But that would have the AN-225 lift the little MAX space plane to uh, about 40,000 feet, and then the MAX space plane had its own uh, external tank that would allow it to get to orbit. The total load for that was basically at the maximum load for an AN-225. That would have been interesting to add to this. Maybe some modder could uh, come up with that. That would be challenging though, that would be very challenging. So the ramp is coming down and let's go back inside. It's interesting to see it here. We're kneeling and it shows the progress on here. You can see door and leg legs have been done. And during the kneel, the camera in here gets a little bit wacky and then resets. So probably we should not be in there because it gets a little bit crazy. I guess that's unavoidable. So the AN-225 is kneeling down. So great details as far as the uh, loading and unloading is concerned. You can see the little legs to support it as it kneels. You know, the legs next to the landing gear, nose gear. We are at Antonov Airport here. That is where I decided to take off from. 
And I really wish it had given me the rest of the runway back there. So right now if we peek inside we can see uh, the generic cargo which seems to be wood or crates or something like that. Okay, and from inside uh, my camera is all messed up. <laughs> uh, uh oh. No, my camera. Oh gosh. <laughs> It worked before. Uh, this is not the first time I tried the ramp, but it's clearly gone horribly awry this time. But like I said, the, the camera can get weird when all that stuff is happening. Now uh, the fixed cameras also don't seem to be working right. Oh, this is a special pad view. Okay, so even though we... Okay, uh, what, which one was that? 8. Control shift 8 is the pad view. All right, so <laughs> we may be saved. So load cargo. All right. Now we have the large industrial boiler inside. Right, and hopefully when we close up, the cameras will be back to normal. Just remember control shift eight. It worked properly last time. It just didn't reset the camera this time after it finished the kneeling thing. Okay, uh, you can see what's happening with the camera right now, and this is what I mean. Okay, nose is coming down now. Now, the industrial boiler has a set mass. It's 140 tons, so we're going to have to, if we want to get to the max load for the plane, uh, compensate by adding more fuel. You can see the current weight in the upper right-hand corner there. It has, in the planned weight, a separate cargo weight and payload weight, which is a little bit weird. The cargo weight is the boiler. The payload weight, I don't know what it's reading. But whatever it's reading over here on the pad is completely different from what this weight and balance says, which disturbs me. Uh, so I'm going to just move that up there, and that will get us to our maximum weight. Here it says on the pad, weight set by loaded cargo, unload to manually configure. I guess the... I don't know what this payload weight is even changing. <laughs> uh, changes the current weight, but the planned weight... I don't know. I guess I'll just move, put it like that. That payload weight is less than the stated weight of the boiler. Let me at least get it to the boiler's weight. That's a little bit over the boiler's weight. The boiler's weight should be, oh, 308,000 pounds. So, okay. Anyway, we are at the maximum takeoff weight of the AN-225, and that is the important part. And we are going to try to take off. So, throttling up. Now, I believe the speedometer is uh, either in kilometers per hour or in Mach number. <laughs> The M part is probably Mach number. The dial might be in kilometers per hour. Oddly enough, the two are not too far apart. Depending on the atmosphere, of course. Atmospheric density. Okay, releasing brakes. We have a lot of flaps applied. Ooh, in the weeds there. Lots of flaps to get off the ground. And it'll take the whole runway. We are at 140 knots indicated. I've got a separate indicator outside the sim. I'm trying not to have a tail strike. I've done that before. <laughs> okay, gear up. The trim is super sensitive, I've found. And retracting flaps is dramatic. And we need a lot more speed before retracting flaps. We're at 175 knots right now. We'll try to fly over Kiev. I've got some VFR scenery off of Pleitson.to 
but mostly it's still generic buildings. It's not like photos, photogrammetry or anything. Okay, retracting flaps one notch. And you can, I'm not touching the controls. You can sort of see how it dips down when we retract the flaps. We'll go outside. And a little bit of trim does quite a lot. I've got a little nav map, that's what I'm using. So we're gonna turn around. We are going in the opposite direction of Kiev right now. A little too far. Uh, some of the flight dynamics might be dependent on exactly where we've got our load and uh, center of gravity. I'm already at 270 knots, so I'm gonna try the air brakes. And they do force us down a bit, and then when I trim up, it really goes up. So we're just gonna fly around here for now. That'll lead us to be landing quite heavy. And we'll see how that works out for me, I don't know. I am going to allow myself to go a bit fast around here, just so I don't stall. Which I've also done before, with this plane. Uh, I've had some tough times with, with it already. So yeah, I just have a uh, Landmarks Kiev City pack. And most of the buildings will be generic, but some landmarks will be custom. And it was a uh, freeware pack. Fairly large. I think the city center is still up ahead over there. Up oh, there are two custom buildings right down there. And that stadium's probably custom. And yeah, there's a, a few more here. This, I guess, is uh, sort of the city center area because you've got some business buildings that are custom. And churches. And statue. That's there's a special bridge there. Truss bridge. Well, let's take a look at this side. We've lost a lot of speed actually. Oh, there's a suspension bridge there that we didn't take a proper look at. Oh, interesting little district over here. With some colorful buildings. I doubt that's generic. But let's not go dip too low and too fast. But yeah, that's a little special district right there. Colorful patch. Okay. I'm gonna try and land this thing with its really heavy load right now. It's still practically a uh, full load, so it's gonna be challenging. Potential for disaster high, unfortunately. Oh, 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 oh that trim was too much. Whoa. Oh, yeah. It's gonna be interesting. First attempt at landing it. Well, I see the runway. It's a nice clear day out. Right now I'm pretty close to the red line for the flap setting that we have, but I really need this to slow down, so I'm gonna put the air brakes. But I'm worried about those. Trim. Me and the trim have not gotten along so well. Ear down. And the extra bit of flaps really makes a lot of difference. That that notch that I just did changed quite a lot here. Yeah. 
and we're lofting quite a lot because of it. Still a little bit high. Oh, we're going down really fast. Stop that. Oh gosh, oh gosh, oh gosh, oh gosh, oh gosh, oh gosh. Ah, oh, crud. Okay. Yeah, uh, incidentally, we seem to stall out. We were at 166 knots, so I don't think it's a good idea to try and land this with a full load. Probably. So I, I have learned my lesson. I, I don't think I want to try landing it with that much weight again. So yes, the AN-225, quite a handful, actually. Uh, quite a challenge to fly and... Uh, enjoyable for many reasons though uh, partly because it is a challenge so hopefully you will do better than I did and we have uh, four main liveries and then there's the aviator club things and a blank one uh, so yeah with that thank you for watching I hope you enjoyed the video if you did please do press like if you have any comments or suggestions please leave them in the comment section below and I will see you next time